Hello everyone, today I'm working on this lifelike uh, sea liner. So uh, it's seen better days. Some of the some of its stuff uh, fell out uh, during shipping. It's got a couple of ladders missing, uh, no couplers. So that's kind of bad. It's got no couplers. Uh, the horn's completely gone, so that's not good. But anyways, I'm still going to want to fix this up and uh, use it on my railroad. So let's get to work on that. So the shell removal on these is pretty easy. You just pull up. Well, here's the good news. I still have the light. Just uh, no couplers. These are pretty popular on eBay. Um, people pay uh, good, good money for these. So that's nice. So um, they're about the same as the um, the FA ones. So I'm just gonna remove the two screws, and my two trucks uh, should fall down. I'm using a bigger screwdriver just because it has more torque. And then manage your stuff as you work. That way you don't have to look for it when you're done. So I was looking at sound decoders on eBay the other day and I found that uh, they make one for this engine. That might be one reason why it's so popular. I'm not going to put a sound decoder on this one. I'm very happy uh, to run it with DC. And it's got a lot of lubrication already. I'm going to wipe some of this down. So the contact strips, they can fall out. That's okay. Not a problem. Then this little board is just gets sandwiched in it's sandwiched in there with the light. And look at that, the gas tank is part of the gas tank is part of the unit. This is a little spacer that goes to the front. So that uh, be careful to keep that in there. You're gonna miss it if you lose it. Clears, it makes some clearance for the, uh, the little circuit board there. And inside here, everything looks good and in order. I don't think it needs any lubrication, it's just oozing out of it. So I'm not touching that, but I will uh, clean the wheels. There. These side frames really look good. I really like them. To get the side frames out, there's a little pin here holding them together. So you just have to move it over that and that will release them. And then you get access to your wheels. Now this engine, it looks like it's in pretty good shape. Lots of uh, lubrication already. Sometimes um, the FA ones, and I'm assuming these two, they can be a little noisy. So um, I guess that's just the way they are. I haven't been able to do anything about that. Sometimes people they'll remove the uh, inside bearing. That seems to help, but it's not a very big problem for me. There you go nice and shiny then I can put that right back together
they weren't too dirty to begin with. So that reminds me of another subject that I wanted to cover. Uh, Daniel Cordopassi is really good at reminding me to use uh, my micro trains a height gauge. This one's old enough that it says KD on it. And on it, there's a place where you can check the gauge, the gauge of your wheels. So this one is a little bit too wide. You can see if I put it on the track, it's uh, everything's all wrong. It doesn't line up. So you can shorten them up and then try it again. See where they fit. Almost there. Still just, just a little bit more. Let's see what, where we're at now. Now it's a little bit too short. But we're almost there. There, perfect. Let's see how it fits on the track. Perfect. Excellent. There's also a space on there if you're, you're building track. There's a space there too to check your track gauge. So uh, it's always good to know. Of course, I'm going to use it because I'm doing coupler work. Check the height of my couplers at the end. So my wheels can go back in there. And I put the other one in. And then contact strips. And then the other contact strip. Make sure that you put the bearings in the end caps. Feels really good. So I'm gonna put my side frames back on. Well, I see what my problem is. It goes the other way. So I check it every step of the way to make sure I'm happy with the result. Once you have it in, you should feel no rolling resistance uh, whatsoever. So I'll do the other side off camera. Now I'm going to put everything back together. So I'm going to bring the other frame close by taking attention for this uh, little con um, insulator here that everything's lined up. Oh, that was easy. I'm gonna put my contact strips in because I'm gonna bring in the truck next. The contact strips go in. And then the trucks will just fall in there. Use gravity as your friend. Then be mindful of the order in which they're supposed to go. And this is the time to line up all your contact strips. But before I do that, I think I'm gonna bring in my two screws. So make sure you line them up properly and uh, top stitching the strip there. The body shell holds the strip together. So I'm gonna go test it like that, but it'll 
you don't need the body shell to hold the strip there there's also a piece of tape that uh, hides the worm gear here there's like a lot of lubrication here way too much it just doesn't look right So I'm going to wipe down some of it and I'm going to put the little piece of tape right back on it. That will make it look better. And don't forget your headlight. It's a little, little circuit board that just slides right in this little uh, place for it here. So it's very tight which is good because I do want it to contact the electricity. Let's go see how it runs. So let me just put some power on it. Runs beautifully. It's a little noisy, but that's the noise they make. And then reverse. Now I gotta work on the cosmetic stuff. So yeah, these couplers are gonna be a challenge. There really isn't much to work on in here. So some of the extra parts I found in the box, there was one of the brackets for the front coupler. It's not complete, but it's certainly gonna help me. So that's certainly gonna help me. I'm mean, gonna just try and figure out where it goes. I got really lucky there. It just fits perfectly. All I have to do is slide in my coupler. And maybe hold it there with a little crazy glue. And it's gonna look just right. Good stuff. For sure it's not my favorite thing to do, but I took the bracket from the FA1 and I'm going to put some glue on it on the back and that should be enough to keep it there. You don't necessarily need a lot of crazy glue, just enough to stick it there. And that's going to fit right in there. And I can even test the height of it using one of my Atlas trucks and my piece of track. So I put the engine on the track. So I put my engine on the track and I bring in, bring in my truck. You can see they're going to work together. No problem. And in the same way I can test out my front one. Nice job. Also, don't forget to put on your horn. So that looks much better now. And now it's time to run some trains. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. I certainly had fun making it for you.
See you soon.